Lo ha ganado todo, ya no tiene dedos para llevar los anillos. Es un tres veces campeón del mundo. ¡Ben G! Playing on the red side, it's the Flash Wolves man in the mid lane. There's nothing sweet about this stone cold killer maple. All right, gentlemen, good luck and have fun. All right, yeah, fierce. I like that. That was great. I, I can't do that. <laughs> If I try that, I blow my voice out. Yeah, <laughs> like Martin said yesterday, girly voices. Girly voices. That's why we're here. That's why they are on stage. Yeah. Most color cast. Never mind. I'm not. Kidding. <laughs> we're talking. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Let's go back on track. Shall we? <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Faker and Mata will be after this, but Bengi and Maple. This is actually a really interesting one because these two players, they were never voted in at, to the All Stars until this year. Before it was Score, before mm -hmm. it was SKT actually had to qualify because we took the number one teams. And Maple, it's like West Door Shadow, I mean, Toys Shadow, back and forth. This is the first time that these two guys have actually been the most popular in the region for their role. I think actually that's a good point. As well, like, Bingy is like so underrated. The guy has won like three world championships. What more do you need to do? Like, how do you prove yourself? Everybody's like, oh yeah, he's going to lose this game. He's falling off the bandwagon. Yeah, right? Like. I would say, even for myself, coming into World, it's like, uh, Bengi's in a slump. It's like, yeah. Bengi's not playing too well. They have Blank. It's like, Blank's not that great. But then relative to Bengi, it's like, okay, how good are, how good are these two? But Bengi was the one that just kept getting subbed in over and over again when they needed him. And here he is on stage. Stark, yeah. can't sub him out this time. Can't sub him out. It's my time to shine. Maple, though, is a player that I just really enjoy watching. And okay. One quarter Syndra. Locked Builds in with Tom Kench. Trying to run this like matchup through my head. Feels like Tom Kench is actually quite comfortable. He loses on the push. So if you're not familiar with Tom Kench in uh, all ins, he should be running snowball, probably, because that's the way you want to play him. Because you can actually I don't think you get interrupted from Sinner's QV if you snowball in, so it's much better summer spell than even like the barrier that he's running right now. Yeah, and you probably don't need the barrier if you have the thick skin. Yeah, you exactly. Can hit it fast enough. So I don't think. Bengi has done his full research, or maybe just playing a different style, but we have seen Snowball Tom Kench all in, because you want to get into close proximity, where the, the base damages of your spells are just super high. Yeah, Tom Kench does so much damage if he can actually get to you. Yeah. Uh, and then Syndra at the same time, oh, she'll have wave clear and wave control. I want to see how much he uses his W on the side of the Tom Kench to actually clear waves. Yeah, it has some AoE, but I think I think the, the play pattern is basically surprising a, a W, like using your W to blow up a wave to create maybe a path to get a Q, because otherwise angling the Q is going to be very obvious. Like, Cinder will always be hiding in minions, and I guess that's where you're looking for punish. Yeah, and he's definitely going to be hiding behind minions here, because Bengi did take the snowball oh, last okay. second, loaded okay. a little bit late there on the overlay, but that's exactly what he needs. And it is going to be a little bit more AP focused here from Maple, so is Bengi got some magic resist? Yeah, I'm just looking at Maple. This is actually Maple right here. He's running like the standard just early no armor. Oh, he's he got 80. 80 ooh, red. Ooh. Oh, he's fighting already. Yeah, don't face Shaker Tom Kench. That's not going to end up too well. So Mady, Maple is running some magic resistance on his glyphs. He has 80 reds, though, for physical harass and basically helping him last hit. Mm. So even you, though you want for all ins, you want to like run either magic pen, maybe hybrid pen at the worst. Um, probably not anymore since the quality yeah. change. But you definitely like. You value having the comfort knowing that you can last it just a little bit better, especially with the uh, annoying turrets if you run some 80 reds. What's he have uh, masteries wise? Let me check real quick. He is running Thunderlords as expected on the Syndra. Okay. One point meditation, two points in vampirism. So, how yeah. these Green Fighter's Gift is actually pretty good as well, so it does reward you for playing in the brushes if you're playing like these Thunderlords champions. Because nobody wants to run Bandit. And then there's a pretty weird page here on the side of Bengi. He has everything. Yeah. There's like 5 AP, 72 to health, some magic resistance, attack speed, and magic pen. He really is like jack of all trades, master of none. But let's look into the actual gameplay. We see Maple always hiding behind the creeps and just Q trading. Ugh, Bengi's just taking so much damage. He's going through those flash charges right now. Man, he's not getting any too. poke in to really use the corruption part. Corrupting part of the corruption he potion. To, he's like, he needs back up. Maple's about to hit level two. And Maple playing, obviously, for a poke-oriented style where he keeps hiding in the creeps. He doesn't need to skill E early because in Summoner's Rift you skill E sometimes early because you're afraid to get ganked level 2 and it's a really good 
tool against ganks, but obviously if you can hide in your minions, just do QW. Yeah. Makes him miss that one too. That's a good trading pattern. You always saw him with the W, guaranteeing your Q can hit. Ideally, you lost it creeps or you poke creeps with the Q, but he always has the push going so he can just lost it with his auto attacks and save Q for harass. Remember, if you auto attack an enemy champion, you draw minion aggro. Basically, yep. that'll punish you even if you're next to the cannon. But if you use spells, it will never draw minion aggro. That was actually something that uh, I'm embarrassed to admit I had learned a lot later than I should have because yeah. I, I was a jungler and when I started playing top lane, I had no idea. Yeah, a lot of players make that mistake, especially in the mid lane when, they, when they're when they playing very spell-reliant champions, like maybe an Ari. They do a full combo, and then they go in for the last auto attack, and that last auto attack triggers like six minions to attack them, and they just lose the trade on the back end. Yeah. So you, have to be, you have to be very aware of uh, what you want to do with minion aggro. I think I, I learned it when uh, I played top lane, and I played against a streamer, and I watched it back, and he's like, ah, oh, he won that trade with the Rise because he rune-prisoned me, but he, because he autoed me, he lost it. He's like, if yeah, you just cast spells, he would have won that trade. Yeah, definitely. So, anyway. So, auto attack and top lane really isn't yeah. going to give you too much. He's getting through uh, Bengi's mana, though. Yeah. And his HP. Bengi's trying to get control of the relic here. That's really good. Bengi, he actually walked on the relic at 215 on his side. He knows that his is going to be back up at, at 330. So, he's just doing this, pushing the wave. He doesn't mind how much damage he's taking here as long as he doesn't die. And there's all in going from Maple. Ignite goes down. Bengi still has the thick skin. Pops the great health. Ignite takes out, but he has the base right now. And that gives Maple control of the lane. Yep, control of the relic as well. So Maple will be able to actually push this out, spend spells, no problem, and then get a good back timing. Yeah, we're looking at a 10 CS advantage if he gets everything here. One ah. more creep, one more Q. The cannon, he can pick that up and throw that away. So he can definitely um, go back to base with a, quite a bit more gold. Yeah, I'm trying to think what uh, Bengi's angle is here now because he purchased a Doran's Ring, sold it, went for the shield, and then went for the fairy charm as well. Maybe he sees that Maple is doing quite a few attacks in between. He wants to negate that with the Doran shield. I think he just wants some mana regen so he can maybe win a sustain war against Maple. Yeah, he definitely wanted that because Mono was being a problem for him. So, kind of went between the Doran's Ring and that. Wonder what he's going to build though eventually. But we know Bengi thrives under pressure. Like they swap him in <laughs> in uh, the end of a best of five, just uh, when the World Championships is on the line. He went down to three HP. Very, very underrated ability to perform under pressure. So there are a lot of people, like I'm going to use Rainover as an example here, 89% win rate during the regular season, but in playoffs, we always see like a little bit of a different Rainover every now and then. Yeah. Bengi right now, looking to push in that wave, just get the reset. Forcing Zuno to CS on the tower is probably like the only way to guarantee that she maybe loses some CS, because otherwise it's so easy for her to CS, but probably w, WQ combo right now is strong enough to clear out the entire back wave, which means Maple's just going to sit on that 6 CS advantage right now. What is Bengi going to do about this? The level Bengi. 6 doesn't help him. I mean, he gets some stats, no, from his ulti. Tanky stats, just kind of negate the all in. Going for the zone, but look at how little this is doing. This is great. Sidesteps W, forces point blank E, which means Maple is being gated in the mana department, which means Bengi can actually start playing up more and more, and now use that zone to deny CS here. Cannon creep denied. So that's exactly what he wants to do. He wants to get back in time for his cannon. He goes in with the snowball. Uh, needs another. Almost got that other hit on him. Maple's out of mana. Yeah, he can't actually cast the ultimate. And the wave is frozen, so Bengi obviously gonna regen. If he get to his shrines, he actually does cast the base. Because these guys based on 30 creeps, it? yes. Oh, good cancel. Maple only had 10 creeps since his last base. So with this like freeze that Bengi has put in motion, he's actually controlling the wave right now. He may very well win on a CS victory. Yeah, this is a very high level game right here because it's so hard to get control of the wave again once you get a disadvantage. But the fact that Bengi has managed to do it with his champion slingshotting back, that's really cool. Just push in and reset anyways, because he wants to back. Definitely will have a bit more gold. Uh, there's a couple components for Maple, but he Maple's style will probably have to shift into an all-in oriented style. Well, if you play a sustained war against this Tom Kench that now has health regen and mana regen, I don't really see you winning. Oh, you so Maple, much. wrong order. Mm. Misses with his E and then sweeps. Yeah. Oh, Bengi can actually get, he has leveled his ultimate. You can get back faster with your ultimate if you want to use it. I wonder how he'll actually use it if he is ever going to. I mean, he could do it from Brush, honestly. Get behind the Syndra. It's an only gap closing tool. It's all about proximity. Definitely also doesn't need to rush because the wave was yeah. fast pushed by Maple here for the reset. 
Gobbles that one up to prevent the reset as well. Wants to fire that on the range creeps. As he gets the kind of last hit, maybe. Mm, different. That's the uh, thing. Uh, Watch he's not used to it. It takes one hit. Usually it takes two, but it takes one turret shot, one auto on ranged. Mm -hmm. And then on the melees, it takes one turret shot and two auto attacks from you. If it takes two turret shots, it dies. Yeah, at least. Yeah. Because it's borderline 50%. Yeah. Damage on the melee. Screen. Again, Banky goes for zone. He wants to deny some CS from Maple. Threaten him to go for the relic. Pick it up. Pick it up. It's nice to defuse. That's good. Just get rid of the mana. That's what he's looking for right now. Damaging his mana pool, forcing him to pick it up. Staying in the bush as well to make sure that he doesn't take minion aggro. Lost chapter finish though on Maple. That's really important. And, yeah, exactly. So when he levels up, he'll end up getting a little bit more. Great job there. Pengi with the snowball to the left as well. Uh, yeah, he got a little flustered here. Good ignite. Maple really controlling if this. He the Q, if he gets the Q. going close. Gobble, gobble. Oh! It's over. That snowball to the left. Very questionable. Maybe he thought he still had barrier and then hit it. Because he hadn't used snowball the entire game before that. I think he just misclicked. Yeah. Probably smart casting. Um, yeah, misclicked his summer spells. Probably swapped them around. Still.